Jackie, this is... Good to know. Okay. It is the Techno Geek Hour here in Alicante, Spain. Beautiful Alicante, although it isn't so beautiful today. Toys. And, I, and you I, have a very cool toy here, and I'm with Rob Hopkins, who um, is part of the Shore Crew for Puma and does a lot of the technical work, and you've been through America's Cups and TP52s, and you're a bit of a geek yourself. Is that right? Yeah, an amateur geek. <laughs> an amateur geek. Uh, well, that makes you two, two levels above me. I just love this stuff. But we're here today to talk about the new Nortec DVL that was press released a couple days ago that is still kind of a, 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 a prototype starting to go into underwater uh, vehicles here soon after they did all this testing with you. Can you just sort of tell us a little bit about this device? What is, what is it exactly that it does um, and, uh, and why is it that, that, that Kenny Reed on Puma was so excited about it when he talked to me? Well, what it does is tell us how fast the boat is going forwards and sideways, sideways being leeway. And it gives us that accurate information and no, no sailboats ever had that before. How does this change the way that the boat can test against itself, against its own uh, predicted performance and, accurate, and actual performance? Well, you have to measure it because if we had two boats lined up, we could you know, pull up a dagger board a little bit and measure the loss and gauge against the other boat very accurately with just a you know, laser range finder. But with only one boat, we have to measure the angle of slip through the water. Volvo has so many ways of changing its leeway with a canning keel and the dagger board uh, we, we have to know the answer. Even if you do your best to figure out w what the current's doing, where you're testing, and so on and so forth, without two boats that can go sort of one on port and one on starboard and go cross each other and come back, you don't really know what the local current's doing in a really small micro area, but this lets you figure that out? Yeah, because we have uh, speed over ground with the GPS and speed through the water with this, and, and just take the difference of the two vectors and we know exactly what the current is at all times. Tell us a little bit about Nortec, the developer of this product with you guys. What's their background that's enabled them to figure out this, uh, this uh, technology? Well, they're a small Norwegian engineering company selling into oceanography and pet petroleo worlds. And uh, they, they mount current instruments on buoys, like in the, an in the ocean, for six months at a time. And they're measuring current profiles uh, hundreds of meters away from the buoy. We wanted something very small and low power and high frequency, so we're working at four hertz and you know at the speed we need to know the answer for a boat. And they had that technology; they just they had to redeploy it and redesign everything to make it work on a sailboat. Well, you, you were mentioning on on a nuclear sub or, or a big research vessel, you'd have a big almost a, a, a dome inside the boat that's then fared with the the hull that has these emitters and and and, and receivers. Right, um, but it weighed what hundreds of pounds, right? Yeah, there there are um, there are solutions that are heavy and big and chew up a lot of power that would be unthinkable on a sailboat. Right. So we needed something smaller. So so let me. I'm going to grab this from you, and then you can take the mic and just uh, just describe how it works. And I'm just going to show it to the camera up a little closer. Here. Okay. So there are four heads there. Those little blue circles send out the beams and um, and then measure the reflection. So we have a couple measuring fore and aft and a couple measuring sideways. And then we do all the math to figure out where the boat's actually going. Okay, what do they measure off of? I mean, they got to bounce off something. If you're, if, you're, if you're doing sonar depth, you bounce off the bottom, right? If you're doing forward looking, you're bouncing off of... What are you bouncing off of with this little thing? Plankton. Plankton. Yeah. Now, what about when you're in... Uh, you know some of these some of these mid-ocean deserts where there's uh, where there's you know one critter for every gallon of water as opposed to a thousand. Well, Nortec, since they work in this field all around the world, know how much plankton there is on our race course, and they picked a frequency and a power to make sure that we'd always have the backscatter we need to to get the answer. Backscatter. That sounds yeah. sophisticated and military. <laughs> I like it. Can you so so explain? So obviously this goes through the through the hull, but it's in the bulb actually. Yeah. And then you've got a cable that runs all the way up through to the head of the keel. Uh, yeah, it just goes into the boat. Okay. So um so then extends. Can you show us how it's fared into the hull? Yeah, that would stick out a little tiny bit, and that, and Ken wasn't happy with that. We <laughs> we actually sailed that way for you know several months. This has been on the boat the entire time. Um, we've been using it for a year. So eventually we found somebody at Goodrich that makes acoustically transparent material. That means that the beams can go through this kind of rubber without being refracted. It's exactly the same as seawater. 
and they just mixed up the solution that's exactly right for that. And that's what they do for their day job is they make, they cover a nose cone of a nuclear submarine or a torpedo with this so all the shit inside there works. So bang, we had that. So that's where our bulb surface is right there. It's absolutely fair. So there's less drag than even a paddle wheel. And, and as you were telling me, even looking at the bulbs, the bulbs are very squashed in profile. So, so it's almost flat already. Yeah, it's beautiful. Our guy Murph, who fared it in, did such a nice job. You, you can't even tell that you're running your hand over it. It's pretty fascinating stuff, and, and again, I, I, you know, Tom, uh, the navigator on, on Puma uh, Ocean Racing, and of course, um, of course, Kenny, were, were excited, and, and given the fact that this edition of the Volvo for the first time banned tubo testing, tubo, uh, um, uh, it, it, I guess it should provide a fairly big advantage over the other teams that don't have this technology. You think that's the case? Yeah, because you need to know how fast you're going and how windy it is to do any testing. Right. And if you don't know how fast you're going, you don't know how windy it is. So both of those answers depend on boat speed and on leeway. You've been in a laser and you pull up, you're going downwind, medium air, and you pull up the, the daggerboard too high, the boat depowers and you feel less apparent wind. That's because you have leeway. So anybody that doesn't measure the leeway doesn't know how windy it is. And it's not that people don't measure it, it's that it's that you know looking at your uh, you know doing doing little things pulling up the daggerboard and measuring the change against the shore or or or, or looking at your wake is not going to be very precise and a one percent error over the course of an eight thousand mile leg translates into a big wind doesn't it? It does and they are not measuring it you know just because you can see the boat skidding doesn't mean <laughs> that your that your instruments that your jumbo knows the wind speed it doesn't know that it doesn't know that stuff. Now, how, how does it all integrate with the existing system? I don't know what, what you guys are on, what, what your whole uh, uh, electronic suite is, but does it integrate in well? Yeah, we're using WTP3, the new Brooks and Gatehouse processor. It has a lot more processing power. We can write JavaScript, and so we were able to write a JavaScript to crunch the numbers and uh, get the answer. So that was, that was part of the solution. All right. Well, it's it's exciting stuff. It's certainly for for for, uh, for techno geeks. It's uh, it's interesting, and um, I think for people who want to go and, and, and figure out how they can how they can apply it to their own program, it'll be interesting. Tell me how, how they can learn more and how they can uh, let these guys at Nortech know that the sailing industry might need this. Well, they can go right to nortech ascom N O R T T E K. Yep, exactly. Like Norway Technology. Dash as.com and the, the front page news on their website is exactly this. Okay, Nortech as.com. There's a contact form on there too, so make sure you send a contact in. I think that while they're developing it now for the under for the submersible market, is that that's right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think if they see some interest amongst the sailing market, they, they'd probably be pretty quick to adapt it and try and get the production costs to a point where people can afford it. Well, I mean, I have no idea how much you know so, something like this can be produced for. Is it something that could be uh, uh, sort of feasible for for a non-America's Cup team? Yeah, surely for a maxi kind of a team, they could definitely afford it. Steading down to a you know far 40 is probably too expensive, but it, like you say, it's all about scale. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, if you're spending you know if you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on sales, uh, you know, whatever it is, 10 or 20 or 30 grand or five grand isn't too much to spend on figuring out how fast you're going, right? Exactly. Fair enough. Rob, thank you so much, and thanks to uh, Puma and Berg for this great little set. I love it. I haven't been up here yet, but I hope I can come back for a drink later. Great. Take care, Alan. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Bye. Bye.